In this video, we're gonna go through the last test that we can have, which is based on the two sample tests, and mainly we're gonna test the difference between proportions. So let's see what kind of hypothesis we have there, what test we do, and how can we design a confidence interval for that. So over here, the hypothesis would be the following. Let's give an example. So let's say we want to know the proportion of Dutch students at the Erasmus University that use bikes. So let's call that DB. So they use bicycles to ride around. And uh, that we want to compare with the proportion of international students who ride bicycles. We want to know whether these proportions are equal or not. And under the alternative is that they are not equal. So these proportions differ from each other. That would be the hypothesis. Now, how do we run this hypothesis? Recall from the one sample test on proportion, or basically uh, just the test on proportion, we had a Z test for that. Then we're going to have a Z test here as well. Notice the association. So we're going to have here a Z test as well, where we take the differences between the sample data, which is the proportion in the sample of Dutch students that ride bicycles relative to the proportion in the sample of international students that ride bicycles divided by the standard error. And the standard error is going to be the proportion in general, which we're going to explain in a second what this means times one minus that proportion multiplied with one over the number of observations of Dutch students plus one over the number of observations of international students in the um, sample that we're using under the square root. Now let's understand these proportion samples or sample proportions to know how to compute the math. So what this is telling us is that we're going to take the number of students we're going to take here the number of students that are riding bicycles out of the sample of Dutch students. So we're going to have number of observations, number of students that are Dutch. Out of them, how many are riding bicycles? So people who are Dutch and ride bicycle. And the same logic goes over here. The second pro sample proportion is going to be the ratio of students which are international and ride bicycles, international and ride bicycles relative to the number of international students. That's how we compute these two. Now this proportion P hat general, right? Uh, it's going to be equal to the number of students. Let me, draw, let me write the math over here. Uh, change colors. So that's going to be over here. The number of students that are Dutch and ride bicycles plus the number of students that are international and ride bicycles, IB, uh, divided by the number of observations of Dutch students plus the number of observations of international students. That's how we compute that P hat. This is the P general that we're using in the formula. And the reason we need it is to compute our Z score, our Z value. Okay, we compute our Z value. What else do we need to know in a test? What's going to be the critical value? Well, recall, recall the Z critical value assumes infinitely large uh, sample size. So we do not rely on the degrees of freedom, meaning that the Z critical value, let's say that we have a significance level of 5%, is going to be Z, Z critical value with 0.05 divided by 2, meaning we're going to have a 2.5% on one tail, and that would be equal to 1.96. And we would compare this to values. So let's say that we would reject the hypothesis. What would that mean? It would mean that we have enough evidence that the proportion of Dutch students that ride bicycles differ from the proportion of international students that ride bicycles. That would mean that would be the intuition. Now, what else do we need to know? How can we design a confidence interval for that? So uh, let's write it over here. That's literally the last piece of the information. For the sake of the example, let's keep our classical 95% confidence interval on the difference between the population proportion of Dutch students that ride bicycles uh, minus the pro population proportion of international students that ride bicycles. Because recall, what we have here are differences based on sample data. These are just estimates for the population data. We want to know what's the range of values that's going to contain this real difference between the population groups with a 95% probability. With that said, how do we compute it? We compute it based on the sample calculations that we've made so far, which is going to be the sample proportion of Dutch students that ride bicycle minus the sample proportion of international students that ride bicycles plus minus the Z critical value at the 2.5% um, tail on one side, or in other words, the 95% confidence interval, that's going to be 1.96 multiplied with the standard error. And in the standard error, we're going to take into account both proportions of each sample. So the way it's going to look, it's uh, just a second. Uh, it's going to be the following. So we are going to have the proportion. We're going to have over here the proportion of the Dutch students that ride bicycle under our sample multiplied with one minus that proportion DB divided by the number of observation of Dutch students and D plus we're taking over here the proportion in our sample of international students that ride bicycles times one minus that proportion 
uh, we're running out of space here, one minus that proportion of IB divided by the number of observation of international students. All of this we take under square root. So this we take under square root and that's gonna give us the confidence interval. This is the last piece of information that we're having. Let me just highlight it like that. This is gonna give us the confidence interval. Now, with that said, let's just zoom out to see the biggest picture of what's happening here. And then you'll see what we've done so far. And you can use this, you can pause this video right now like that to see what's been happening, what are the tests and look at the associations because this is what we've been doing so far. All of them have the same analogy. They have a hypothesis to test, they have a value to compute, they have a critical value to compare, a conclusion to give, and a confidence interval to design. So the method is the same for everyone. The only thing that matters is to understand when to use what, and that we can understand based on the hypothesis that we're testing. Use this guideline to solve questions. When you solve questions, you have like a frame uh, which test to apply, Practice with using the actual numbers like the math. The math can be tricky a lot, so take care with the numbers and use this just to revise, practice, and basically everything will be good. Hope this is useful. Hope you like it, and we are done.